Hello everyone and welcome back to the Daisy Regrowth Project. Uh, this is our last one, this is our last video um, and we need to make a hair to go into our, um, our global vaccine event. Um, do you remember last week we talked about uh, the scientists all around the world looking, um, speedily looking for a vaccine um, so that everybody can return to normal um, in the world. And we made a mad scientist tortoise for our woodland. This week uh, we've got to make the hare to go with him um, and uh, I thought it would be really good if he was made, if he was trying to find a nice herbal solution to the pandemic. <laughs> herbal medicine has been around well since the beginning of human history I think. Um, we've used plants for our treatments and cures and uh, preventatives in medicine, uh, well, since we were living in a cave, really. Um, and as, uh, you know, we're making a woodland um, and our creatures live in the woodland, they can use um, plants and leaves and flowers and roots and the barks from the trees uh, to put in their potions. So our hair is going to be decorated with those things. William Morris is a designer from the Victorian era. You may have heard of him, he's very, very famous. He started uh, the arts and crafts movement of that era uh, and was one of the leading artists. Um, and he used nature in his designs, um, particularly all of the native plants of Great Britain. Um, and his work, his wallpaper and his fabrics are really still very, very popular today. Shall we have a little look? So here he is, William Morris, with a beautiful beard. Um, and let's have a look at some of his uh, wallpaper and fabrics. As I said, they're all still in use today. Um, you can buy William Morris designs. Um, and he, you can see that he uses flowers and leaves. Um, and they are absolutely stunning. They're gorgeous. Look at this one with just leaves all going kind of in different directions. It looks like they're dancing. Really beautifully done. And not much colour in that one, but I think you can get them in all different kinds of colours. Um, and here's one called The Strawberry Thief. Um, and it's got birds in it. And I just thought I'd show you this one with a, a hair in it. Um, but flowers and leaves. Shall we make some wallpaper for our herbal hair? Okay, so this is quite a long um, activity, but um, I'm going to say to you that you can choose, if you would like, between making some wallpaper for decorating your hair or just uh, skipping this part and going on to drawing your hair. Um, so if you're going to do the wallpaper, you will need a, a bit of uh, paper, um, you can either use plain paper or I'm going to use a little bit of cartridge paper because it's a little bit better for your paint. You'll need a paintbrush um, and you'll need a, a surface to uh, ink up or paint up your leaves on. You need to gather some leaves from the garden um, and then we're going to paint them up and then print them on our paper. So you need something to to um, paint your leaves on, something like this piece of plastic or a piece of card or even a piece of card with some foil on if you like. The paints are, um, well I'm going to use these uh, poster uh, paints. They're already sort of pre-mixed um, paints but you can use your painting if you like. The other thing is I've made a little stamp out of cardboard. I've just uh, drawn a flower on it um, and um, cut it out and I'm going to use that like my leaves as a, like a stamp to print from. Um, and when you're gathering your leaves you need um, something with, that's going to kind of print well so with lots of sort of little lines on. 
um, and I would leave a stalk on it so that you've got something to hold on to otherwise your hands get a little bit messy so try and leave you know a, a stalk on it so that you can hold it and I've got a selection of leaves there but if you don't want to do the wallpapering part you can just do the drawing part if you want um, and then all you'll need is a piece of plain paper um, a pencil and eraser and a, a fine liner but let me demonstrate the printing part from you because it's fun um, and here we go so so um, I'm just going to put a bit of paint on here I probably need a bit more than this I will um, but it's a good start so I'm going to get my paintbrush a bit of paint and if you're mixing water with your t tin of paints then you'll mix up some paint I'm um, select a, a, a leaf um, any any one you like I might use these three three ones together so I'm going to do I'm just going to ink up my leaf like this I'm holding the stalk and then I'll just putting lots of paint on now the first time you do it it takes up a lot of paint and um, but then after that it doesn't take so much right let me just move that um, and then you can see where I'm going to pin, print so now with the leaf um, I'm holding on to the uh, stalk so I don't get too much paint on my hands and a bit of kitchen roll on the top I'm just going to press it onto my paper Ta -da! there there's a nice leaf print um, and uh, then you can carry on and make a quite a nice pattern or do it quite randomly do whatever you want um, you know you can really think about your design and uh, and do it you it's quite a good idea to come off of the page now and then because uh, it kind of looks nice rather than it all being in the middle um, but it's up to you. Um, if you do do that, be careful of whatever surface you are on. So you don't want to get any paint on um, furniture or anything. Anyway, so you can see the leaves really paint quite, uh, ink print quite well. And once you've done the first one, you don't have to put so much paint on because it just keeps on printing. And you might even be able to print it twice. Um, without inking it up in between but there you go that's so that's my first kind of layer and it's it's nice and pretty I haven't done too much of a pattern and they're a little bit random um, but, but I quite like that pretty now I'm going to use another color and another leaf these this this little set of leaves um, a little bit messier because they're tiny little leaves um, and I'm going to pop it down there get my kitchen roll there you go I'm going to speed the film up while I do this so that it doesn't take too much time to show you um, so I carry on printing um, when I need to use a clean piece of kitchen roll I'll do that so that I don't get too much ink everywhere um, and well, I, didn't, I didn't ink that up twice I just stamped it twice there. quite random um, not sure about my pattern but it's not too bad I'm now going to use my uh, little cut out flower um, and I'm inking that up in exactly the same way as I did the leaf unfortunately there's nothing to hold on to so your hands get a tiny bit messy here um, but ink it up and pop it down and there you have a stamp of the flower it's not working as well as the leaves I don't think but it might be the colour that I'm using. There, that one's a bit better. But you know, you can carry on building up your wallpaper just like this with as many leaves as you like or cutouts. So I'll just show you another one. I've inked up a bigger leaf, a fern leaf, and I'm just printing that in blue. 
uh, it kind of printed better on the kitchen roll on the other side of it so I'm just inking it up again and printing it the other way and quite messy because there's a lot of leaf there but that's very very nice do you see how the second print comes out a little bit better than the first that's always the way with printmaking okay so I'm going to put a few little leaves on as well that's nice blue and green go really nice I like those two colors together um, I'm not going to overdo this one Okay, so now I'm just um, putting on some more green leaves, but they're slightly bigger than the ones um, that I did at first. Uh, there we go, and put those on, and then I select a tiny little leaf and do it in red. It's a little ivy leaf, and as you can see, that just kind of really... Um, lifts the blue and green and makes it look very pretty with the white background um, and so uh, that's two uh, different pieces of wallpaper that I've done there as demonstrations and you can see the leaves print really nicely now what you can do is let that completely dry um, here's my first one I let it completely dry and now I mean you don't have to do this uh, but and you can photograph if it before you do it but I'm going to put a wash over the top a wash is paint with lots of water in it um, and then I've grabbed some bubble wrap and I'm just I'm just uh, pressing it into the wash and that gives quite a nice effect so that's something that you can do but as I said you can photograph it before if you're worried about spoiling it um, I'm just giving it a dab now and, and of course I have just spoilt it now because that red leaf up there wasn't very dry so make sure your uh, print is dry before you do anything to it so I'll just show you some that I've done previously here's another one that I've um, pressed some bubble wrap in in the wash uh, afterwards here's one that I haven't done that to but they I've um, done leaves in light green and dark green um, here's another one that I've done a wash. You can see I've just put a little p a piece of material over the top and it, and it gave it a nice pattern. Um, and here's one that I've done with, after I've done a wash, I've then stamped it with my a piece of cardboard flower um, with a, an, a whitey colour and it really stands out. So here's, there's a few options for you. Um, have some fun, okay? Now the hair. The difference between a rabbit and a hare, and in this photograph you can see it quite clearly, the rabbit has got quite small ears and the hare has got lovely long ears. He's also taller and bigger and longer legs. Um, and uh, so we want to include that in our drawing. He also has um, slightly bigger feet. Um, now you'll need your piece of paper, and I'm going to use a sellotape reel. Um, I don't um, don't want to put it in the middle of my paper. I want that would be the middle. I want to put it to the side and slightly down. Um, and I'm just going to draw a light circle in there. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker so you can see it. Um, but you will be rubbing parts of the circle out. So please don't draw it too darkly. Now from the sides I want you to draw two lines going up to the top left hand corner. Just like that. And then place your sellotape on the top of those two lines. And draw another light circle. Okay flatten that circle with a line okay you're just going to flatten it uh, by kind of chopping off a piece um, hang on let me just rub the, that piece out so that you can see that clearly um, I'm also going to rub out the top of that circle that we no longer need that's inside the body because it was so that we could draw the body um, and now we've drawn it so I'm just going to get the rid of the top of that circle so you, that's the basic shape of our hair 
That's quite simple. Two circles joined together with two lines and flatten off the top of the circle of his head. Now from this corner, there's a little line there I don't want, from uh, this corner here I'm going to draw his ear. So a nice long ear, don't forget the hairs have got nice long ears, coming out, nice curve going up and down. Uh, and then join that up, follow it around to get a nice ear shape. Then I'm going to do another one, it's going to go outwards because this hair is running. So they're not going to be exactly the same as ears, but they can be if, if you want. But I'm going to make them going outwards towards the edge of the paper so it looks like it's running. So there's his two ears. And for his nose, go to the other edge of his, the top of his head, the other point. And I'm going to just draw a tiny little heart for a little sweet nose. Um, just right on the corner of it there. Okay, you could do a circle if you wanted, but I've done a little heart. Okay. Now, uh, from the corner of the heart, from the point of the heart, do a nice long curve following his face around and then make it a petal shape that goes up to the heart again. This is his cheek. Okay. And then on the top of his cheek, you're going to do a really nice big eye. Big round eye like that. Sitting on the top of his cheek. Now then, can you do a big pupil like that, looking forward, and a little highlight in the middle of that, um, which will leave white and colour the pupil in black in a minute. So that's his face. Now his arms and legs, now you might think these are difficult, but they're not. Um, so really what we want him to look like is running. Um, and I'm going to start inside the body like that, um, just down a bit from his head and I'm going to do a nice curve going up and down and then follow that curve around and then end it with some fingers okay that's one arm and he's running uh, so it's kind of helping him along the way and I've just rubbed that little bit of body out in between his arm now for the other arm opposite it's going to be behind his body so we're going to start outside of the body and we're going to do a line that goes down and up this time so one this arm goes down and up and we're going to put a little thumb on the top of it okay and then we're going to do a little curve for like a C shape for his for the, end, uh, for, for the edge of his fist and then um, fill in his fingers like this just three little fingers like that because I want him to be holding something later just like the tortoise now do a little dash like that and then you can follow the arm around and finish it at the edge of his body so you can see that the two arms one of them uh, is like a U shape and the other one is like an N shape. So one curves up and over and the other one comes under and up. Um, and it just makes him look as if he's running. Now let's do the legs. But let's first of all put the tail in place so that we know where the legs go. So, uh, so it's on his backside really. So uh, a little... Uh, curve inside on the bottom of his back now it's not on the bottom line it's on his back um, <clears throat> uh, just like that and I've just made it look a little bit fluffy with a few different lines there but you can do like a petal shaped tail now bring your pencil down along the bottom line and then keep going and bring it round to make a big curly U shape like that it's uh, it's it's going to be the, his back leg running, um, and then I'm going to do a little dash to end it, and then I'm going to draw his foot. So a, a long line down. It's quite long because he's got a big foot. This is going out of the camera shot a little bit, um, and now start the top of his leg, um, and bring it down to his knee like that 
and then follow the shape of the other, the first line around until uh, you get to his foot and then draw a straight leg, uh, a line down and do some toes. And you haven't seen my toes because they're out of shop, but you'll see them in a minute. My apologies. There we go. Um, and his other leg, uh, we want it to look like he's running. So we've done his leg that's pushing off. Now we're going to do one that goes up and over in a loop. And then a long line for his big foot. Now follow that line around till you get to his heel and then curve it around and bring it up to make his toes to join up with um, the first line. Um, didn't like those toes, so I'm going to draw them again. And there we have a running hair, and it does look like he's running, doesn't it? I hope you can draw this for me, um, as well as doing the lovely wallpaper so that I can mix them together. I'm just going to finish this off. I'm going to do his chest, so just starting from the top of his arm, I'm going to draw like a, a patch his tummy, it's his tummy, and it just gives him another kind of dimension, really. Um, and that's it. You can go around it with fine liner. I'm going to speed up the film for this. That's his head, flat top, nice long ears. Kind of going in the direction of him running. Just fill in that pupil, that is nice. Don't forget to leave a little white bit so that it looks like he's got, he comes to life. Uh, you know, if you're going to go around your drawing with a fine liner, then it gives you a chance to rub out any lines that you don't want. It kind of strengthens your drawing. But you don't have to do this bit because um, I want you to photograph it and send it to me. Um, and then I can, um, with your wallpaper, mix them together on Photoshop so that your hair is decorated uh, with um, the herbal theme. And um, I think it will look really lovely in our global vaccine race. Don't forget to put some little dots on his cheeks and the only bit of colouring that you need to do for this is maybe a little pink nose. And there you have a lovely running hair. Okay, um, and then uh, if you um, are able to do both activities, the wallpaper and your hair. I will mix them together like this. Uh, I'll put a black and white version of your wallpaper into the hair so it looks like he's got lovely fur and I'll put your wallpaper into his potion bottle um, uh, which is carrying to the finishing line of the vaccine race. Um, however, if you only manage to do one or the other, either the wallpaper or the hair, then I will, um, I will be able to use some spare wallpaper or uh, uh, the template of the hair to finish off um, the project for, for you. But hopefully you'll have time. Um, you can spread it out over two weeks and I would love you to have a go. I'd love to see how you draw your hair because the drawings that have been coming through have been so lovely. I've really enjoyed this whole project. Um, you'll be able to see the finished woodland um, very, very soon now and it's going into exhibition at the light box. 
um, and I'm sure you'll be able to show it in other exhibitions in the future too. So don't forget to send me both your wallpaper and your hair or one or the other. Um, and thank you so very much indeed for joining me on the Daisy Regrowth Project. Bye bye.